such that, uh, or that intersects every line in the plane exactly twice. Is there a set in the plane that intersects every line exactly twice? What do you think? I mean, for instance, here's a set. Does this intersect every line exactly twice? No. <laughs> right? OK, well, does this intersect every line exactly twice? No. OK, well, I'll just throw more points on. Uh, does this intersect every line exactly twice? No. But you have to watch out. Like, you don't want this to happen either, because that's, uh-oh, there's three, right? Remove that one. OK, so this has kind of a funny feeling to it. Like, you know, things are getting away from you if you're not, you know, you just throw and draw more lines, you add more points. Hmm. How would I go about finding such a set if one existed? Maybe induction, <laughs> yes. OK, what do you think the answer to this question is? Yeah, well, yeah, of course, because I'm going to try to show you <laughs> something. But it's somewhat surprising. Of course, this depends on the axiom of choice. Because we're going to use transfine and induction. Uh, nobody knows an explicit construction yet. Dylan. Well, yeah, it's kind of traditional in mathematics to, to warn people when you're using the axiom of choice, even though, by and large, mo most mathematicians these days accept the axiom of choice. It's just that the axiom of choice leads to, to some funny results. And so it's kind of strangely comforting to know when you're using the axiom of choice so that you can at least be aware of, aware of it. it yeah. I, most, most people have no problems accepting it, but they just want to know because it still has a category. It still has the, the status of like, um, uh, you know, a rogue axiom or something. You know, we try to avoid using it whenever possible. Yeah. Okay. Excellent question. Okay. So here's a proof. This is a proof idea, a sketch. Because I have to leave some time actually for uh, course evaluations. So um, here's the idea. What we're going to do is we're going to, let's call the set L, the set, uh, the set of all lines in the plane. OK? How many things are in L? Uncountably many things. In fact, the cardinality of the real, real numbers, right? So there are, this is called the continuum. There's C many lines. This is the, uh, the cardinality of R. The continuum. Okay. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do just to start off. I'm going to well order L. And I'm going to do so with the order type of the first ordinal that has the cardinal C. Now it may not be the first uncountable ordinal because we don't we're not assume we don't want to assume the continuum hypothesis. Okay? So but, but there is going to be a first ordinal that has the cardinality of the real numbers. Okay? And by what I mean by first, everything be before it has a smaller cardinality. That's important. So I'm going to well order L with the type of the first ordinal of cardinality with cardinality C. So the important thing is all before it. All, all elements of uh, this ordinal, let's call it J, all elements of J are cardinal, have cardinality less than C. That's the important point. We're, we're going to use this very, in a very crucial way. Actually, I'm going to save my time from erasing and just do that here. OK, that's the first step. Oh, OK. So here's what we're going to do then. Uh, if I well order it, then 
you can't stop me from writing L as L alpha for alpha and J. So now I'm going to let my set A, the set I'm going to try to show is inductive, I'll let it be the set of all alpha in J such that there exists a set K sub alpha that basically does what I want for, um, for the things up through alpha. So set K alpha will have property Cyclops Smiley. It'll have cardinality less than C. Second property, no three points are going to be collinear. Okay, so I'm going to keep it from having three points on a line, but it might have 0, 1, or 2. Third property, it's going to intersect, let's say this careful, let's say uh, K alpha will intersect every line L uh, beta uh, exactly twice if uh, beta is less than or equal to alpha. So everything up to this index alpha, it will actually do the right thing for. It'll, it'll intersect exactly twice. And I'm going to do this in a nested way. So quadruple qu cyclops, it's not cyclops, quadruple smiley. I'm going to demand that k beta be a subset of k alpha if beta is less than alpha. So here is my set. Look at all the indices for which I can construct a good set. OK. We'll show A is inductive. So A, in fact, will be the entire set. That's the basic plan. And, we'll, and then we're done, right? OK. And this is not so bad. It's easy enough uh, to verify that 1 is an A, that is, with you, you just let K1 be two points on L1. But now I'm just going to proceed like I did before uh, with this idea, right?